Okay, so we've we've established that the um, that the, um, the the order of reactivity of the haloalkanes, right? So the least reactive would be well, fluoroalkanes, which are very unreactive, but the chloro is and then more reactive is the bromo, and then the most reactive is the iodo. So uh, increased rate of reaction. And what was the reason for that? It was because the bond reaction, the uh, the bond strength gets weaker, doesn't it? Okay, so it's easier to break the bond. Uh, so here is a very simple experiment on how we can demonstrate that. Okay, so here's our haloalkane, and we would use like so I've put bromo here, but we're obviously going to test all three: the chloro, chloroethane, bromoethane, iodoethane. Uh, we're going to react that with aqueous sodium hydroxide. Okay, so there we've got that there, and we are going to form the alcohol, and we're going to release a halide ion. Now, how can we show what's happening in that reaction? How can we tell what's happening? Well, unfortunately, this haloalkane and uh, the haloalkane and the alcohol are going to look very much the same as each other. You can't, there's no obvious physical change there. But what we can do is when the reaction occurs, we release the halide ion okay, into the solution. Now, how can we test for the halide ion? Well, we can test for the halide ion with silver nitrate solution. If you remember that, um, uh, that all the silver halides are insoluble, so you're going to get a precipitate. So, um, with uh, if you when chloride ion is released, you get a precipitate of AgCl, which is a white precipitate. Um, with the bromide ion, you will get a a silver bromide, which is a cream precipitate. And with the iodide, you will get a yellow precipitate of silver iodide. So we're going to test for the formation of the halide ion, essentially. That's what we're going to tell if the reaction has occurred. So, right, let's rub some of this stuff out and have a think about why what we've got in these in the test tubes here. Okay, so Look at this one here. We have got the haloalkane, obviously. We've got sodium hydroxide, that's a reagent. Why have we got the ethanol? Uh, that is because the haloalkane doesn't mix very well uh, with water. So it's to enable the haloalkane to dissolve in water. Or to mix with the water with the aqueous solution. All right, so that's what we're going to do there. Now, at every minute or so, what you're going to do is you're going to get a pipette and stick a pipette in there. So here's my best drawing of a pipette. That's rubbish, okay. Um, that's also awful. But anyway, you're going to take a little bit of that out and you are going to, it's more like it, and then you're going to add drops of that into the acidified silver nitrate. Okay, now why do we need to acidify it? We need to put, well, because, don't forget, in this tube, we've got NaOH, yeah, and uh, that needs to be neutralized because otherwise that's gonna form a precipitate with a silver, silver hydroxide. So that's why you add some silver nitrate to get rid of that. So I'm sorry, nitric acid to get rid of that. Now, if you have released any bromide ion or chloride ion, then that is then gonna form, it's gonna react with the Ag plus ions there to form a precipitate. So you're testing to see how long it takes to form a precipitate. So you're gonna take a sample out of here, say every minute. So remove drops every minute. And you're gonna time how long it takes for a precipitate to form, okay? And which one should form the precipitate most quickly? Well, it should be the silver iodide because that undergoes uh, nucleophilic substitution the most quickly, so you're going to release iodide ions, which then react with the silver ions. Okay, so that is just a fairly rough and ready experiment to try and prove the order of reactivity. You should get the precipitate forming first with the iodide, a uh, little bit more slowly with the bromide and the chloride slowest of all.